So Baptist is bringing some of the newest and most exciting developments in cardiac care to our patients. We've organized these techniques as provided by our team of specialists into our cardiac arrest center. One of the most well-known uh, cardiac emergencies is of course the heart attack. This produces chest pain that can radiate to the neck, arms, or jaw. It can be accompanied by shortness of breath, nausea, vomiting, and even sweating. If this occurs, take an aspirin and call 911 immediately. An equally, if not more severe, cardiac emergency is the dreaded complication of a heart attack called cardiac arrest. In cardiac arrest, the heart doesn't beat effectively and it can't produce a blood pressure. Normally, the heart squeezes blood out by pumping like this, but in cardiac arrest, the rhythm changes and it only beats like this and it's unable to produce an effective blood pressure in that manner. The treatment for cardiac arrest has been CPR. Unfortunately, recent medical dramas have produced a misconception for the general public. A recent poll shows that people think 80 to 90 percent of these patients are just going to walk out of the hospital after their cardiac arrest has been treated. Unfortunately, this is far from the truth and the national average for that actually occurring is 8 percent. The news is actually even worse than that because most of those survivors are discharged to a nursing home tied to ventilators, feeding tubes, and even usually in a coma. That is until now. CPR has been brought into the 21st century. It's now called CCR for cardiocerebral resuscitation or heart and brain resuscitation. This technique alone has produced improvements in survival by 200 to 300 percent, two to three times your chances of survival. And this is just the first phase of what we do at our cardiac arrest center is to reach out to the public and teach them how to do this technique. And you need to know this technique because the sooner it's applied to the patients that need it, the better that they do. So Carrie is with me here today to help teach everybody how to do this. It's very simple and very quick. You can learn it on this video today and then go and teach it to the rest of your, fa the, your family yourself. So the first thing that you need to figure out is who needs CCR? Basically, th this technique is for adults. Children or victims of drowning or asthma, they need the old-fashioned CPR. But CCR is for adults who suddenly collapse, who are either not breathing or breathing funny, and you can't wake them up. So typically, what we, what we do for these people is when we walk up to them, we shake them, and yell, yell, them, yell at them, scream at them to try to get some type of response. And if they don't respond, you can take, even take your knuckles and kind of scratch, press on their chest pretty hard, rub their chest pretty hard, so that they will, that will provoke some kind of response. If they don't respond to that, you start chest compressions. You're gonna, you'll see the person collapse, or maybe you were told that this person just collapsed. You want to make sure they're on a hard surface. If they're on a bed, you want to pull them onto the floor, uh, protect their head actually when you pull them down, but get them on something hard because the whole idea is you want to, you've got this person whose heart is doing this and you are going to make it do this like it's supposed to do. Really, your hands are their heart. So you're going to compress their heart between the rigid backbone and the rigid breastbone by doing chest compressions. The first thing you want to do when you see this is establish that this person needs CCR. So you make sure that you can't wake them up. Lady, lady, are you okay? If there's no response, you may even want to take your knuckles and kind of drag them across their chest pretty hard to make sure that they're not going to respond. And if they don't respond, it's, it's time to start doing chest compressions. If you're the only one there, you want to do chest compressions for about two minutes before you stop to call 911 or before you run and get a, a defibrillator if you can find one. Now if somebody's there with you, you can immediately have them call 911 or send them for the defibrillator. But your compressions are done by placing the heel of one hand over the stern, over the breastbone, the heel of the other hand on top, locking your elbows, getting your shoulders above your wrists and just literally falling on their chest to compress it that depth that we talked about. And you want to do that about a hundred times a minute. Uh, think of compressing to the beat of a song like Staying Alive. Um, that will get you at about a hundred beats per minute. Um, so Carrie, do you want to kind of start up from someone telling you that this person has collapsed? All right, I'll rub on her sternum. 
and there's no response. She's pushing pretty hard and there's a popping. If she's breaking ribs, that's not a problem because I'd rather this patient have broken ribs uh, and be alive. And if you're, you're noticing that she's kind of, she's having to push pretty hard and she's having to push pretty fast and you can get pretty tired very quickly. So if someone else is there, you can say, hey, how about you give me a break? That person can come up and start compressions as well. So if the person you sent for the defibrillator comes back with the defibrillator, or uh, if you've run and gotten it yourself, they're very, very easy to use. Uh, there's, uh, it, all you have to do is turn the unit on and follow the voice instructions. And there's even pictures on the pads to tell you where to place the pads. Now the, plaid, the pads have to be placed on the skin. You can't pay, put them on the clothes. So at that point, you do have to remove uh, the clothing. But the, very simply, the pads are placed on the skin and the machine takes over. It, and it will tell you when to get, uh, make sure you're not touching the patient so that you don't get a shock. But between early chest compressions, early effective chest compressions, and this device, those are your best chances for helping your friends, your loved ones, or um, the person that you are just trying to help on the street survive this devastating disease. Where do you get a defibrillator or how do you know who has one? Defibrillators are actually very common nowadays. Of course, they're going to come on any um, uh, emergency vehicles that might respond to the situation, but almost every public venue has a, an automated external defibrillator. Malls, libraries, airports, anywhere where there's going to be a large congregation of people, you can probably find one. I took CPR before. Why is it no longer necessary to do mouth-to-mouth -mouth breathing? That's because most of these people are healthy adults. So they're doing their normal daily thing. They don't have lung problems. They're not having a hard time breathing to start out with. So they've got a normal amount of oxygen in their blood. Studies have shown it, when, that, when we induce cardiac arrest in animals, it takes 10 minutes for that blood oxygen level to fall to the point where you would put somebody on oxygen or give them extra oxygen. So since it's not a problem, we say don't fix it. Don't worry about breathing for these patients. So there are a few differences between CPR and CCR. Namely, CCR is only for adults. There's no mouth-to-mouth -mouth breathing. It's easier to do, and you don't have to be certified. This video is all you need in order to be able to perform CCR effectively. Therefore, you are covered by the Good Samaritan Law, and you're under no legal liability by performing this uh, on someone in order to try to help them. Baptist Cardiac Arrest Center starts in the field with you. Your hands are their heart.